Should you wait for the new GMAT, GMAT Focus? That's the question for this video. I'm going to give you my opinion. Uh, we haven't actually seen the new test. We haven't even seen the books. I have pre-ordered them and they're arriving in a week or two. I will be making many more videos, especially on the new stuff for the new test. So that's uh, data sufficiency logic questions, whatever those are. Really curious and excited to find out. Uh, so if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, I suggest that you go ahead and click that subscribe button right now so that you are notified when those new videos come out. Uh, although you're not going to get notified unless you also click that little bell icon below. So go ahead and do that and let's jump into it. The decision is going to come down to a few factors. So number one, how soon do you need your score, right? If you, if you want to apply round one this year, 2023, then you're not going to be able to wait for the new test. What you might want to do is take the classic test and consider taking the new test as well if you're, say, on the wait list, right? So one way to get off the wait list is to take the GMAT again. In this case, that could be the strategy. Take the, the old GMAT, apply with that score, and then take the GMAT focus uh, to submit that new score while you're on the wait list. If you're not planning to apply this year, probably for most people, the advice would be to take the new test. And here's why. The new test isn't going to have any sentence correction and it's not going to have any geometry. And what's unique about those two aspects of the GMAT is that they really rely a lot on memorizing content. And I'm, I suspect that that's the reason why they've been removed from the test, because there's nothing else quite like geometry and sentence correction in terms of having to have all this content knowledge. Now, the exceptions to that rule are if you've already been studying geometry and sentence correction a lot, you already have all of that content knowledge, and they are particular strengths for you. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that uh, you know, in the verbal section, Yes, you tend to make mistakes, but they're usually not in sentence correction. They're usually in critical reasoning or reading comprehension. Then you should probably take the old GMAT because sentence correction is a strength for you. Same goes for geometry on the quant side. If the mistakes you make in quant tend to not be in geometry, yeah, take the old test. Okay, so if geometry and or sentence correction is a relative strength for you, then you should consider taking the old GMAT. Now, one more really important aspect to consider here is that in the old GMAT, we had integrated reasoning, which is scored separately from your overall 200 to 800 score. But in the new GMAT focus, what was known as an integrated reasoning now will be known as data insights. That's going to be part of your main score. So if you find that integrated reasoning is particularly difficult for you, if that is a weakness, Take the old GMAT. You don't want that to factor into your overall GMAT score. It's going to pull your score down. On the other hand, if integrated reasoning is one of your strengths, I would definitely consider waiting for GMAT focus. So to summarize, who should take the old GMAT? Uh, approaching deadline, so can't wait for the new test. Uh, sentence correction and or geometry are particular strengths relative to everything else and or integrated reasoning is a particular weakness. If that describes you, take the old GMAT. If the opposite describes you, meaning if you're not particularly good at sentence correction and or geometry, or if you haven't even started studying those yet, then I would avoid the old GMAT, go for the new one. Uh, same goes for if integrated reasoning questions tend to be not all that hard for you, then definitely go for the new test. So. That's it for today. Again, there's still a lot we don't know. Uh, waiting for those books to arrive, uh, the 2023-2024 uh, official guides. And I will be making many more videos through this summer, uh, just kind of exploring those new books and especially the stuff that's new for the GMAT. So I'll see you in those next videos. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.